Hello crypto fam thanks for tuning back to my channel i'll be giving a break to my soul bound token series today and we will talk about reentrancy hack that occurred last month which led to 1300 eth being stolen from an nft lending platform called omni now reentrancy attack is a classic solidity smart contract exploit and it was the reason for famous dao hack in 2016 that led to ethereum hard fork and that resulted into a split in two chains ethereum and ethereum classic now let me pull up an article from hacker noon and talk about this exploit in the end we will also see a demo of this exploit in remix so let's get started a reentrancy attack occurs when a function makes an external call to another untrusted contract then the untrusted contract makes a recursive call back to the original function in an attempt to drain funds okay okay there is lot to digest here and it will become more clear as we see the diagram below and also look at the code snippet but there are two key takeaways first there is an external call made to another untrusted contract and the untrusted contract makes a recursive call back to the original function to drain its fund now i'll come back to this image in just a bit but first let's look at this code snippet there is a deposit funds contract this contract will deposit the funds and when withdraw function is called it is going to check the balance of the caller whether the caller has sufficient funds to withdraw then it's going to transfer the funds and then it is going to update the balance of the caller now in case of a malicious attacker attacker is going to point the recipient as another contract so when deposit funds contract is trying to send ether to that malicious contract in that case its fallback function gets executed which in turn makes a recursive call to deposit funds withdraw function and since the balance is not yet updated this check is going to pass and it is going to again transfer more funds back to the attacker even though attacker has already withdrew what he has deposit in the first call itself and this very recursively it can lead to the draining of these funds now we can try to understand this with this example as well there is a check balance function and then there is a send funds function once this send funds get called it is going to call the callback function in contract b and contract b is in turn going to call contract a's withdraw function in which case there is no time to update this balance this doesn't gets called at all and since the balance is not updating these checks keep on succeeding which makes this send fund to succeed and which leads to the draining of all the funds now let's see both these functions in action i am going to copy both the functions and i'm going to be opening remix editor right now so i have already copied both the solidity files i have just added this get balance function so that we can see the balance in real time i am going to give you i am going to give you my github repo link in the description and there you can find both the files so be sure to check out the description now as you can see i have selected hard hat provider in its an environment i am running hard hat locally hard hat is a smart contract development platform just like truffle and i am now going to compile both these smart contracts so let's compile attack.sol and then i'm going to be compiling deposit funds.sol now both are compiled now i'll try to deploy both the smart contracts first i will deploy deposit funds it's important because we need the address of the deployed smart contract to add in in our constructor so first let's deploy deposit funds it's done i'll copy this address and then we'll go back to attack and here we'll pass in the address of deposit funds and i'm clicking deploy and voila both the contracts got deployed and let's try to deposit some funds into this deposit funds contract after which we will try to drain all these funds by a malicious smart contract known as attack so first i am selecting this first account in this series which is 92266 and i am going to be depositing 1 eth okay if we do get balance we can see 1 eth is present and let's select another account and deposit 3 eth so i am going to be sending 3 eth and i am going to click deposit and now if i do get balance 
I get 4 ETH as the balance of this deposit funds. And let's select the third account and send in, let's say, 2 more ETH. Deposit. Now it should become 6. Now we have 6 Ether stored in our deposit fund smart contract. Now we are going back to our attack function. And let's take a look what attack is going to do when I call attack function. It is first going to check whether I am sending more than or equal to one ether which I am going to send. And then it is going to call deposit funds deposit function which is going to deposit this one ether into this deposit fund smart contract. And next it is going to do is it's going to call withdraw. This is important because deposit fund is going to check whether you have greater than zero balance or not and once it does that it is going to make a call again back to our attack.soul contract which in turn if you see this is the fallback function that is going to be executed and it is in turn going to call this withdraw function so this is going to recursively call again this withdraw function before it could update the balance that we have already withdrawn it is going to call it recursively again and again which will let this deposit funds get tricked that we still have funds left to withdraw and that's how the attacker is going to drain all the funds and let me show this to you in action i'm going to send one eth because it is required by our statement so let me send in one eth and then i'm going to call attack function and once we do that let's first check the balance of this contract get balance we have seven eth Woo. And let's check the balance of deposit funds. You can see we have zero balance over here. So this is how this reentrancy attacks happen. And that's how attackers can actually drain all your funds from the smart contract. Now, how do we prevent this? That's the next question. So there are two ways. One thing is you can ensure all states happen before calling external contracts. That is update balances or code internally before calling external code. So before you make this call in deposit funds, before you do any external call, you should update this balance. So ideally you should first update the balance and then you should do any external calls. And better yet, you should use function modifiers that prevent re-entrancy. You can have a modifier no re-entrant which is going to first lock it and then it's going to execute that function and then it is going to release the lock. So let me show this to you in action. Now here we can add our code. So I'm going to paste it and we can add this modifier in this withdraw function. So now when the caller is trying to recursively call our withdraw function. So let's say first it calls our withdraw function and let's say balance is we are doing as we were doing. First the call is made to transfer these funds and by then since no reentrant lock is there it is going to make this locked true and if someone is again trying to call withdraw function it will check whether it's already locked or not since it's already locked by our function the function will not get executed anymore and we will get an error and we can see this in action right now so i am going to delete both the deployed function and i'm going to recompile them and redeposit it so it got recompiled and we haven't done any changes in attack so let's just deploy so first we need to deploy deposit funds let's copy this and let's go back to attack and let's deploy it okay and let's deposit some funds over here let me say to eat deposit get balance to eat let's select any account doesn't matter let's say three ETH deposit get balance now there is five eth present in this smart contract now we are going to attack function i will switch back to another account i'm going to send one ether and i'm going to call attack and you can see we got fail to send ether error we got an vm exception and even if i try to send the contract it's just gonna revert and it's gonna show us an error just gets reverted yeah, so that is it for this video folks. Hope you all liked this video. If you did, please subscribe to my channel. Please give this video a like. And let me know in the comments what all you want to see in our upcoming videos. And I'll catch you in the next video. Bye-bye.